Hey everyone, this is Elias from Revmatch Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2024 Lexus GX550 Luxury Plus. Um, yeah, this is the mall crawler version with the big wheels, uh, but can this still be luxury? This off-roader be luxury? Well, let's go ahead and uh, find out. We get started in the front, and yes, this thing looks mean. I love it. It's, I love the previous gen, but this is just really the evolution in design to the next gen GX. And it really did it justice. I love the way that this looks. The color, yeah, this is called incognito, which it really isn't because you stand out so much with this subtle color, as ironic as that sounds. So I do love the look to it. And yeah, and as the sun kind of goes in, you get kind of a, a goldish color reflection to it or a cooler uh, color when the sun is, it, it, when it's in shade. So I love the fact that we have that uh, kind of shifting effect. My favorite selection though would definitely be Nori Green. Yeah, I think that color just looks spectacular with the black roof. It's really the best combination for the GX personally. Then we have the triple beam LED headlights, which look really good. I love the daytime running light on there as well. We have the LED fog light down here. We have the black grill that looks awesome. Big Lexus badge. We have the front facing camera here for the 360 degree system. Uh, and the other thing I want to mention with kind of the whole, yeah. So we have a radar camera system up there as well is the Lexus a safety system for this. It has been really good at the fact that we've been able to uh, essentially sort of do a one pedal driving with this. So I love the fact that, you know, it's constantly monitoring the vehicle in front of you. If you let off the gas and the vehicle in front shortens its distance from you or you shorten the distance from it, it will go ahead and auto brake for you in the gentle, very accurate way. The front end is really great. I love the fact that we have this kind of black uh, lower part there. We do have a good amount of ground clearance here, which is really nice to, to have, especially if you decide to go with the uh, non mall crawler version. But yeah, that's kind of what you get in the front. So let's go ahead and uh, see the controversial uh, stuff that's under this hood. We get under the hood and we have the 3.4 liter V6 twin turbo engine and it is cranking out 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to the 10-speed auto and then to the full-time four-wheel drive system. The power is there. Do I miss the V8? No, I really don't. The fact that we get the the amount of torque we do with this thing it's incredible and it's really available at any rpm one thing though that the other thing that i had a really big complaint was the previous gen's transmission there were really long uh gears that just you know really felt down on power because of the you know less powerful v8 with this we have 10 gears the problem it has 10 gears to kind of decide <laughs> which one to pick when you hammer it down. So just be aware there might be a slight, and, and I'll, I'll attribute it to being in eco mode, even though it was, a, you know, just slam it down to the, to the ground, the gas pedal, for it to recognize, okay, you don't want to be in eco mode, you want to go. It still had not just a small hesitation at first, which is, understandable but once it did it kind of did a two-stage downshift so just be aware of that more gears if you're off the line i'd say we're great if you're highway passing just preemptively hit the gas pedal a little bit more uh, aggressively uh, so that it does get you to maybe the more desired gear that you want um, the power distribution no issue you know, this thing is, is a monster. We did take this out to a, a car show and the parking was in a steep, like rock sand kind of area, grassy area. I did put it in four low just to make sure that I didn't dig myself into a hole uh, because the gravel was loose. Um, 
no issues. It was kind of uneventful, really, uh, as far as getting the power down, even with the big wheels, and just kind of crawl your way out. So loving that. Um, the sound is really nice. I don't know if some of it is pumped in, but it sounded good. It sounded really good. I love the, 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 the sound that we experienced. I'll say that. <laughs> but one thing, MPGs. Yeah, you're still going to need that gas card, like I said, in the, in the previous gen. Because we ended up getting 15.8 miles per gallon while we were driving this. Now, the, the, the actual EPA numbers are 17 combined, 15 city, and 21 highway. So, we didn't gain much efficiency <laughs> from dropping the two cylinders and gaining the two turbos. But we did gain some power and some fun, really. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have in those big wheels and tires. You get down to the wheel and tire package and you have this massive 22 inch wheel and it is wrapped in the 26550 Dunlop Grand Track tire. Now, a couple of things with this. Yes, the wheel is massive. I love the design, but I think the 22 is a little too big. Yeah, I would probably say 20 would be nice um, with you know, a, a bigger meteor tire, which I know over trail, you kind of get th that bigger, uh, smaller wheel, bigger tire uh, option. Couple of things with this. So the tire was good. The, the road noise was virtually non-existent. Um, the feel of what the tire was doing was good. No weird thing. The suspension though. So I think the top, the big wheel and the the small sidewall, the suspension, the chassis, and the body were not communicating well. And now, the way that I usually drive, uh, record my reviews is I do my driving first, which is technically the second half of my video, and then I do my stand-in, which is this, second, which is typically first when you watch it. And um, I discovered something. <laughs> I was ready to trash this because it really felt horrible this week. Any little bumps, all those components were not talking to each other. We're not on the right frequency to absorb things in comfort mode or normal mode. Yeah, they were all over the place to the point that it, uh, it felt like I was driving a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> yeah, where you literally, it's just jittering all over the place. And you'll see it in my review at, at, when I'm driving at first, the camera's just, just shaking horribly at any little bump. And that is when I got to the fast part where I like to drive spirited and I put it in sport mode. So the suspension was in sport. And that is the secret to this. So you're gonna have to use your custom mode uh, in this and set your suspension to sport because that is when, at least with this wheel and tire combination and the suspension, the chassis, the body, that's where they're all on the same frequency to absorb that. Comfort, no, don't even think about it. Normal is a little bit better, but don't, yeah, it makes no sense. But that's kind of what you get with the setup. Um, I wonder how the overtrail with the smaller wheel and bigger tire would fare some of those smaller bumps that this is just really a big kryptonite to this setup. But yeah, we'll see when uh, I get to drive it in a couple of days. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have on the side. We take a look at the side and this thing is big. It is boxy and I love it. I love this design. Just very simple, but such strong features to it. And that's kind of what you're gonna see in the front when we have that really straight hood, but we do have those dips that we have in the middle to kind of define what the front of that um, the GX is. And it's really helpful, especially like if you're parking or, or you're really close or you're off-roading uh, in this as well. So love that. We have the uh, big fenders here. We take a look at the wheels, the 22 inch wheels. Yeah, we can see the 22 inch wheels fit and they look good. But again, the performance may be the problem there. And I think maybe a little bit smaller would be, would be nice. Um, but overall though, we do have the space to fit large 
tire sizes in there. So loving that. Uh, this is same color as the uh, body. So we still get the incognito. I probably would have liked that to be black uh, to match with the lower trim we get down here and then obviously in the back. Now we have the mirrors. So these guys are really nice. I love the fact that they're kind of that, uh, you know, FJ Land Cruiser kind of squared off um, thing. But the only problem, they're not very functional. I, I definitely was hoping for a little bit more length uh, than the height that we get with this mirror. But I couldn't stop loving the fact that they look the way that they look. So yeah. Um, sacrifice a little bit of safety i guess for looks but it's it's a good setup and then we get the uh, black framing which i'm always a big fan of uh and big doors big windows just a lot of light that goes into it and also this has the glass roof with the crossbars so this was optioned out with the crossbars at the top for the roof um, but i do like again that we get a lot of light that comes in here and even though it feels big and bulky inside it feels nice and airy uh, even though we do have not not the super light color but it's just really really great um design to this key fobs in my pocket i can go ahead and reach to the door and it will unlock. I can go ahead and open it. And because this is the luxury, it has a step that comes down and makes it easy to get in. Like literally the easiest thing ever because it's at a really good height. It comes out a good amount. Um, so if you're older or have difficulty getting into taller vehicles, yeah, this is the trim you need to get to get those steps. Um, the problem with them though is I don't know if you could hear it, but they've been kind of creaking a little bit. So they may need to have some maintenance done to them. Yeah, sounds like they're struggling a bit, but we have that. We can go ahead and lock that and then I can go ahead and grab the back and it opens up as well. So it does have the sensor in the back and obviously the step comes down like royalty and we can close that. Big door, super easy to open, super easy to close. Loving this side profile. So let's go ahead and see what we have in the back. We get to the back and yeah, big boxy, love it. Very simple design, but a lot of cool elements to it. We get started at the top. Yeah, we have this kind of big spoiler that sticks out here. Um, we have a big rear window that is fairly flat uh, with the rear wiper here. And yes, we have the option of opening it up from in there which is great. I love this option because you can just throw things in there. If you have a pet uh, in the back, you're able to make sure that they don't get out, uh, you know, while you're trying to put things in. Little things like that. It's really nice. I love the way that that uh, works there. So yeah, one of my favorite things. Then we get the taillights and these things are nice. So they're very small on the side, but that red strip that just follows and connects them looks really, really good. I love that. We have the, the uh, Lexus badge there with the new font, the GX550, the incognito color, which looks good, the bumper, and then the diaper. Yes, it's been named the diaper. Um, for some reason, it doesn't look too bad. I guess it's dependent on the color, but I've seen some uh, GXs that it just looks like it's bulging out significantly more. And I guess it's just the angle of it as well. But even on the side, it's not too bad. So that's basically uh, the cover that you get to uh, hook up your trailer for uh, you know, the GX. So overall though it's really nice i love the the rear end that we have for this apparently we have a kick sensor with this one let's see if we can activate it <laughs> and of course there we go i found it so yeah not too difficult so let's go ahead and uh see what we have back here we're gonna go ahead and give this another try and make sure that it wasn't a fluke so i seem to be lining up with that parking sensor and if i do that Oh yeah, I think I nailed it. So I think that's that's really the secret to it. And I say that because it's always a mission with these vehicles that have those kick sensors to get it right. But when we open up, uh, we do get a good amount of space back here when the third row is down. 
Personally though, yeah, my choice would definitely be going with just the two row, not the three row uh, option because yeah, you don't do either really well. Um, and let's take a look at some of the things though. So as far as the space that you get, that's kind of the, the stopping point for that. When we have the seats up, we have just like a little uh, netting in here uh, for groceries to hold them down. Uh, we do have the power uh, seats in the back. So at least the third row is powered, which is really nice. But we have this tunnel cover here. So we can go ahead and hide our things. And this is really not a one handed thing. There we go. Nailed it. So yeah, we have that. Um, really cool that I see that it has the cutouts for the seat belts. So loving that. Um, but let's see if we can go ahead and take it off. So it took a bit to get that cover off. So we'll go ahead now and try to lift the seat. So we'll start with the right one. And oh boy, this is worse than I suspected. I was mistaken. Oh no. Wow. So <laughs> that is your trunk area. Literally when you have the rear seats up. Yeah, that is, sorry. That is your space. Um, that's nothing. You literally could not put a bag of groceries in there. This is what it should be. So you're really pressed to use this. I almost want to say in, as a last resort for this. So it's kind of a shame that we have that on there. Uh, yeah, this probably should not be a three row SUV. Leave that to the LX. But yeah, you can see you're gonna wanna have this down 99% of the times for your grocery runs. Um, and then you have the captain's chairs, which we'll talk about. But yeah, that's kind of what you get, unfortunately, in the back. We get to the front door and it's very simple, very straightforward. Some little things that I like, other things that could possibly be better. So we get started on the top and the one thing I did like, if you take a look, there's kind of a little lip uh, that it kind of, there you go. It kind of puts this going down. Um, that was nice. <laughs> it was nice because I can kind of put my arm between the, the window and that, and I'm not fighting it for it to kind of fall off. So it kind of held it a little bit better than if it were completely flat. So a small little thing, but really made a difference for comfortability. Then we have kind of this dark, um, shine, really kind of like dull, but shiny uh, door handle there, which is nice. We have the light colored uh, material here for the doors, for the door cards look nice. We have this wood that looks good looks good uh, i just wish it were a little bit more because it really is a nice color and more accents of it would have been a good touch to it then we have the actual armrest area here this wasn't too bad nothing nothing bad about it nothing wild about it because i was just enjoying this top part a lot more um, then we have the mark levinson system so this does have that system that is really nice and loud and clear um, the only thing is I wish it looked a little bit better. I wish we had like a better looking grill than just kind of the cloth area there. And then we have like the uh, mid-range speaker down there. Um, this could have been better. So some little bit more storage when it came to like water bottle uh, and other little things there. That's what I wish we had a better kind of design for it. But that's pretty much what you get with the door. We get to the seats and these things are nice and comfortable. I do like the color. So it's not super light, but it's not super dark. Um, but I like that it has some color to it. So loving that. And the fact that we get the stitching in the same color as well is a nice touch to it. Uh, these are heated. These are vented. These are massage options as well. So love that. The massage isn't the best. So don't think it's like super uh how uh how can i describe it? if you've driven a mercedes that has massage seats don't think it's that so it's a little bit less than that 
but it's better than others that just do lumbar uh, massage kind of thing. But it does have the whole uh, kind of system. So love that. They look cool. I love the stitching design that we get with that. No issues really with, with comfortability. Uh, we have a ton of adjustability options there. Yeah, for your legs. Just really a good, comfortable seat. We get to the steering wheel and this looks all too familiar. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's actually pretty much your typical Lexus steering wheel. We don't have the newer uh, layout that we do with like the RX where we have like that sensor kind of feel to it. So this is more of the tangible buttons, which I guess is okay. I just like the tech in the other ones. So on the left hand side, we have the, the settings for your uh, gate cluster. We have the volumes. Now I do love this. The fact that we have the radio controls of the volume towards the bottom parts of your steering wheel. So we have the um, the volume and then the next track options there. So they're easily accessible with your thumbs. So that I do love because technically you're gonna be using that the most out of every other button. Um, so not too bad. The leather itself though, it's so soft. It is so nice to, to just kind of have the, the feel of this leather. And it does have a little bit of give. So we do have a little bit of a cushion uh, in there, but it's not bad. It's not wow, but it's not bad. And we do have the paddle shifter for, uh, to go through the 10 speeds. And uh, that's pretty much what you get with the steering wheel. We get over to the gauge cluster and because we have the pay attention sensor here, it basically covers the bottom part of the gauge cluster because if you take a look that's kind of yeah that's kind of my field of, of view there so i didn't know there were more options down there so we'll talk about them um right now we have three options that we can do for the gauge cluster as far as like the layout so right now we have it in the mpgs uh, on the left and the gauge the turbo gauge on the right side or the boost gauge and in the middle we have adaptive cruise and then for the second one which again i couldn't tell what that was uh, and how to customize it because of the lovely hey pay attention sensor um, but the next one i programmed to have the boost and the power distribution which was really cool you know more of a performance side of things and then the third one if i'm trailering something i'm towing something i have the trailer brake on the left uh, as far as the gain and the output and on the right side we have our uh, meters for gas for the temperature gauges so loving that and yeah pretty much like if you want to adjust it all you need to do is go ahead and hold to customize and the middle, unfortunately, I left in, in adaptive because we have map, which is okay. I do like the map too, because it does kind of open things up. Um, but overall though, the middle's kind of lackluster. I wish I could have something more in the middle because that would definitely have helped out with, you know, those other drive modes that I've, that I've set up. But pretty much I've just been in the MPG one and the turbo or boost gauge on the right. One thing I wanna show is these guys on the hood. It's one thing when you're kind of showing it there and another thing when you're driving, it's so easy to identify where the hood actually ends because of those small little divots. So loving the way that that looks. And it's a little hard to always show on camera, but this does have a heads up display. It is pretty clear no issues with it yeah it's you can barely see right above there there's like a p and a zero because we're in park and we're obviously not driving um again it's always hard to capture in camera but it's good i liked it it was no issues with it we get over to the infotainment screen and yes loving this massive literally massive upgrade compared to the previous gen so there's a couple of things that I really like about this. So we have Apple CarPlay, it is wireless Apple CarPlay, loving that. Um, one thing that I always hate about Apple CarPlay, and I'll kind of, yeah. So one thing that I hate about Apple CarPlay is if I want to go to the car's interface, not the, the user interface, not the CarPlay stuff, but the settings for the car, I always have to press here and then always look for the brand's uh, app so that it can then take you to, you know, wherever you are uh, in the settings itself for the vehicle. What I love about this system 
is you have this button that will move things over and it will show you the car settings here or the shortcuts to the car settings. So now I can be with my music jamming out and I say, okay, I need to change something or I want to take a look at something. I can go to there and I don't have to do multiple things. I know it's such a stupid little thing, but when you're frequently visiting your menus, you're going to appreciate that little button there. So we have that. And we also have the camera system, which you can put an auto. So basically, if you go down to a certain uh, speed, it will automatically turn on, which is great for uh, things like this. Parking in a spot, <laughs> which obviously I'm not, but it's easy to make sure that the vehicle is in there. The cameras are clear as well, which is rare for Lexus and Toyota because yeah, my past experience has been not the sharpest of cameras, but this has been a major upgrade uh, on here. So again, we just have different settings. We can, you know, direct, see where the tires, where the vehicle will go. Um, you know, we have the top view or the, the front view as well. So it's just really good, really good, simple, very, clear system then the next thing is what i wish we did have is actual buttons um, for the climate system so we do have to have kind of this going on um, for the climate uh, settings we have here one thing and then we also have the actual settings here for the climate i do love this this is so cool i love the way that this looks and you can just kind of uh, move things around there but yeah it's i just wish we didn't have that. I like the physical buttons of for my climate, um, but it's simple. It's, I'll give it a pass. We come down here and we have kind of the drivetrain options. So what I mean by that is the drive modes. So we do have the drive mode button here. If you get the over trail, you do get the MTS or multi-terrain select option where basically that this mode select switches from it being a drive mode select to being a multi-terrain select mode select yeah <laughs> it, it's just give me two knobs or just give me buttons for me to go i hate the fact that you have to press it and then switch and then again if you had the other one press that one and then make that change there yeah just make the switch or give me switches or something but let's take a look at this so with the drive mode we go ahead and turn we are going to turn right and this is one thing that i was like no that's wrong and when you turn right it actually goes up um so just be aware that it's a little tricky at least psychologically if i want to go down the list i want i go right but i get it because it's kind of like a circle so circle yeah that's the only thing I can justify that user interface uh, selection. But yeah, that's the uh, Sport S Plus mode that I was talking about for the suspension. And then the custom mode, which I had to basically customize so that this can be the best experience for uh, the GX as far as driving it every day. But yeah, that's kind of what you get with the mode select. Then we have the uh, uh, ECT second there. We have the tow haul and traction control off there. And then we come over here, we have USB-C connections here. We have for the, um, for the Apple CarPlay and then we have additional charger. And then this little door, which is kind of cute, <laughs> has the cigarette lighter or uh, sorry, 12 volt adapter there. So we just go ahead and do that. Not sure why. I mean, it's almost like, dude, do we really need that? And then obviously we can put the uh, your phone right in there. I guess you can kind of do that if you don't want to put it in the charger, which we'll discuss. Um, but yeah, then we come over here to the to the right hand side, and we have the the cover, or we have the uh, water bottle holder, or or your drink holder, cup holder. Um, it's not too bad haven't really didn't really have an issue with them uh you're probably wondering well why don't you have any cups there that i usually have even though it's registering about 90 degrees right now we'll get to that soon but yeah no issues with that we have the shifter nice and and comfortable no complaints really we have the manual mode as well we have the parking brake uh, on there we have the hold which i've needed to basically uh set up every single time which is kind of a shame um and then we have the four high and four low 
which I was able to use and with the uh, center diff lock to get myself out of that parking lot that was more like loose gravel and at an incline. So we have that. Now, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get back to the wireless charger. So this does have a wireless charger. It's an awkward wireless charger. So we'll go ahead and give it the chuck test. And it passed. It passed the chuck test. Yeah, my poor phone takes some abuse. Um, but it passed the chuck test. And what I don't like about it, though, is if you take a look. So you see how that has kind of that cut out there? That's driving me nuts. It's been driving me nuts. It will drive me nuts. So I can't quite get it to go straight. Um, so it is going to always kind of be at an angle there for it to grab and charge, but it does charge. So no issues with that there, but I feel like it's a waste of space that we probably could have done a vertical charger um, to just kind of shove it in there like we did with the Prius. Oh my gosh, that was really nice to have that vertical uh, charger because it now gave us that much more space. So yeah, unfortunately, but fortunately it's okay. Doesn't have any issues with there. Here comes the fun part. So the armrest, nice and comfortable, great material, no issues there. You open this up and we have a cool box. Yeah, this thing has a cool box. And uh, let's just say this is cold. This is actually really cold. And like I said, it's almost 90. Uh, I'm gonna wanna take a drink of this, but yeah, we can fit basically four, uh, excuse me, four water bottles in there with no problem keep them nice and chill and uh oh yeah and the other experience i had with this was with the lx which was really cool it's just nice to have that there um and that's what you get in the front we get to the rear door and they're pretty similar to the front uh one thing i do like is the fact that the uh bottom storage that we get in the rear is a little bit better because it is deeper uh, so we are able to essentially put two water bottles uh, back here as opposed to uh, the front which are longer but they're not as deep so i kind of prefer this setup which i wish we had in the front doors um, we have the mark levinson we have the lighter door uh, color here and we have that wood that i really liked and when you're in the back you do get the peasant blockers so we are able to kind of do that and let some of the uh, sun stay out and some of the peasantry stay out as well. One thing I do like though, that is always a pet peeve is that these things don't always cover everything because your door is typically at an angle. Um, but I like the fact that Lexus did this and put like the dimpled um, texture there to, to help out block some of that sun. So small little detail, but really smart uh, to do so. Then, we get to the captain's chairs, really the, the middle row, and we get these, uh, which are really nice and comfortable. They look really good. Again, just very similar to the front. Uh, we do have the heated option in the back, which is nice for those for those uh, cold days. Um, and we have the my kids seat on the other one, but basically it's really easy. Just latching it on there, not an issue with that we have storage for our cup holders here we do have a little area for them to uh, kind of go back and forth on there or when your passengers from the rear are are coming forward um, we do have their own climate system in the back with their usb-c charging right in there now because you can't move the seats back if you take a look the seat belt is actually too forward from the seat itself and that's that we went ahead and, you know, leaned it kind of forward. So the, the seats are pretty vertical. Um, I can't move it more, for, you know, forward more because it will now be essentially leaning my son forward. The problem with that is the seatbelt wasn't catching on him really well. So that was kind of concern, which is why I was like, okay, let's just move it forward so that there's at least some tension in the seat belt and that is not the case. So I'll go ahead and try to buckle his seat in so you guys can see. That is a lot of slack there. 
that is a lot of slack before someone can actually sit there. So just be aware and I would say test out your kit seats, test out uh, your booster seats before you decide to commit to this. Not a big fan of this. Now we go to the back though and like I said, when we get these seats up, there's <laughs> really not much space. And as you can see, yeah, so obviously you can't move it up because I have the, um, the cover in the back, but it's gonna be really, really tight. So you're not going to really be able to put many people unless they're small kids. So yeah, um, not sure if I'd like this setup as opposed to the, uh, maybe the two row version of the GX, which is probably what I would get for this. We get inside of the GX 550 and a couple of things, uh, there's a lot of space here and that's because that dash isn't really that long from the windshield and the windshield's kind of flat. And yeah, my camera is probably the last time I remember kind of having to set it up this way uh, was the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon that I reviewed. So yeah, just, and the funny thing is it kind of feels that way in the dimensions of the dash, the hood. Um, we do have those things on the hood, which are really nice. Those, those essentially markings are kind of like markings to make, make it easier for your eyes to know what the front, where the front ends. Um, yeah, the mirrors, uh, again, a little small on the side, but they look cool. Yes, it's like you're sacrificing a little bit of functionality, but they look cool. We do have the brake hold on and we are going to uh, keep it in normal mode for now. Uh, actually, we'll switch it over to comfort because I want to discuss things. So I'll keep it in comfort, which is, uh, you know, kind of weird with this vehicle and you're going to start to see it. So I'll just, I'll show you <laughs> as we get to the areas where there's a little bit more bumps uh, on the road. And what that is, is this thing drives like a truck. It really does. There's it's luxury trim, but there's not many luxuries when it comes to the ride quality. I hate to say that it's a little bit jittery when you hit small bumps big bumps it's fine no issues there but if like yeah like those little bumps like these that's my camera has never shook that much from its mount that's how much it's just channeling everything through and i've driven some sports cars but it's channeled it in a unified way i guess in a in the same frequency that if the the wheels get it to suspension it just kind of travels correctly but this is like suspension is doing one thing the body is doing another and the frame is doing another and yeah it's it's kind of uncomfortable it really is because you're kind of getting all these little things and yeah like literally i i don't know if the big wheels are a big thing to a big factor of it um i don't know if you need 22 inch wheels on this thing yeah they look nice and they look luxury but you're sacrificing a lot that's why that's why i think my my choice would definitely be the overland because we do get a meteor tire and whoa yeah it is really just those big bumps really just kind of jumped me up there um the overland is gonna give me better looking yeah i think i like those wheels a little bit more because it's just a meteor tire and it's probably gonna absorb more of the road than what these 22 inch wheels are doing um so besides the ride quality though highway wasn't bad highway wasn't bad when you don't have issues when you have a smooth highway you know highway cruising highway passing wasn't an issue yeah sometimes i wish granted we did get the 10 speeds which is nice uh for fuel economy if this really did get economical uh because 15.8 um is not really super economical and i didn't reset it so this was previous um 
journalist that got it. And on top of that, my driving didn't move it. It was at 15.8. So that means we basically got the same 15.8. And I haven't been driving at super, you know, aggressive or anything like that because I wanted to hyper, essentially try to hyper mile it. But no, it's it's it hasn't changed the 15.8. So that leads me to believe that is a pretty good average of what you'll expect with this. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, though, the the feel of the the materials are really there. I love the way that I feel in this cabin, minus the actual feel through the cabin as you're seeing. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the drive modes. We'll go ahead and switch it to Sport S Plus. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I kind of feel like there's a little bit of the noise being pumped in. So just be aware of that. I don't want to take this turn too fast. I don't know how the suspension is going to behave. Um, in comfort mode, be aware there is a significant amount of body roll. Uh, so you'll definitely feel that. Yeah, this thing can really get, get going with that... Uh, turbo v6 yeah i'm i'm liking the power that we're getting with this <laughs> yeah it, even even with those big wheels we can definitely get this guy up and going yeah oh so it actually held the gear i'm surprised because gosh i remember the old gx it's like you're you put it in any gear and it's like okay i'm gonna shift whatever gear i want so i sometimes had it like in in fifth and, and it was just not going to that gear it was just behaving weird but yeah this is pretty impressive i'm surprised yeah this is probably the fastest i've gone in it like to kind of hammer it uh and it's pretty surprising to feel it that way let me see if, is that any better? Let me know what you guys think. Cause I'm, I'm kind of going through some similar bumps, but uh, I almost feel like I messed up. I messed up. I should have left it in sport. Yeah, this suspension feels better in sport. Don't go comfort. It's not comfortable. Makes, makes no sense. Why does, why is this behaving better in sport mode than it more comfortably than it did in comfort mode yeah okay so uh we have the auto camera which is really nice especially with this big guy i don't have to go chasing for a button uh for the camera which is not a big deal because again yeah we have that button right there easily accessible so we'll kind of drop a wheel and we will uh, see if how we do with the three point stop But yeah, I love the auto cameras on the Lexus systems because, yeah, they're pretty helpful for uh, big vehicles like this or for like myself that I constantly change uh, the vehicle that I drive in. Now, let me go ahead and give myself a little bit more distance for our 0 to 60 test. I'll go ahead and set up my race box, which you guys can get the link to in my but in my description for a nice little discount love this thing turn it on okay so while that's getting set up we're gonna go ahead and switch over to sport plus mode and we are in drive and hold down the brake let's see if we can load up the 10 speed and go. <laughs> okay, I've been driving this wrong this whole time. 
okay, that is ridiculous. Okay, let's talk numbers. So we are zero to 30 in 2.25 seconds and zero to 60 in 6.52 seconds. And yeah, when I held the breakdown and I floored it, it was loading up. It was ready to, to just go. Okay, um, yeah, this review just changed completely of my whole experience of this week with the GX. And that's because I've been driving it wrong the whole time. Turns out you gotta trade it. You gotta, yeah, this is more sports than luxury. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm back in normal mode, which softens up the suspension. Not completely, but it's already just not in a good place. Let me put it back in sport mode. The only thing that's that kind of sucks, uh, I guess better, is the fact that, yeah, the shifts are going to be sport-like. So, yeah, the, the miles per gallon are definitely going to go below that 15. Um, but that's fine because when you hammer it, it rewards you. This is pretty damn impressive. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Um... I'm confused. I'm honestly confused at this because it is behaving like a better SUV than it has been when I've been babying this and I've been putting it in eco mode and I've been just trying to drive it sensibly as a luxury vehicle to relax on, to be able to just kind of lay back, enjoy the massage seats that this has. And I've been doing it wrong. So, moral of the review is, if you get a GX, just drive it, drive it hard. It likes that, make sure the suspension, I mean, and you can go custom in it, and I, and I didn't go custom with the, the suspension being stiff because of the fact that I was like, okay, I want it to be nice and luxurious, nice and relaxing. No, this doesn't wanna be relaxing. This just wants to go. <laughs> Man. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Lexus GX 550 Luxury Plus. And remember, find the right gear. See ya.